Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Archer, but today we're gonna to be doing another line and wash. This particular line and wash is a cup of sea. It's a mermaid in a teacup. Uh, I've done the teacup actually before at a patron event, uh, or art retreat, and had at the time thought this would be cooler. <laughs> <laughs> with the mermaid in it. So for this, I actually went through and added this. Now I'm gonna break this down step by step. I'm explaining everything that's going on that I'm doing. Um, right off the bat, something to be aware of. And uh, if the moderators can uh, remind people throughout the show, this is on an angle, it's tilted up, which means the gravity is going to pull the watercolor paint down. I'm not painting flat so that I can see the work a little bit better and so that the camera has a better angle on it. Um, that's just something to factor in that if you're trying to get the drips to go down, that you tilt up. Um, this is on 140 pound watercolor paper. There's two ways to get this. You can buy the kit. <clears throat> There's two kits that include the mermaid. There is the complete kit that has the watercolor sheets, which I'm working off today. These are the Viva color sheets with my custom colors. Or, you can use your own watercolors and buy just the sheets. Those are available at our store right now. Um, they had looked sold out for a second, but that I, I, we actually had some more, so I threw those in there. So if you it was, were like, this was more of a technical did they challenge. Go? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was more of a technical. We didn't put enough in the machine. Now, if you're like, oh, I have different watercolors, how will I make it work with those with view color sheets? Can I even do this? Yes, yes, here you can. And how I do that is that I have a color exchange cheat sheet and you can find that on the watercolor blog and it lets you know what pigmented paints are kind of equivalent to the Viviva color sheets that I'm using. As I'm going, I will call out the colors. Um, if you have either the Viviva cheat sheet or the Viviva color exchange sheet, you should be able to do those easily. And I'm kind of excited about today. I have this one already swatched out so we can kind of see the swatches as I go. I'm pretty excited. We're going to be breaking this down into steps. Those will be time stamped after the show. Um, you can just download the traceable and print it out on a piece of paper or freehand it out uh, as you want. That's also okay. All of the solutions are okay. I'm so glad to see everybody today. This is going to be an extra challenging one. I'm definitely going to make sure that I can see my work well by putting on my glasses. Yeah. Because if I don't, wow, those are dirty. <laughs> you see yeah. Apparently, I did. did you assume I could catch? That was a crazy assumption to make. You, you, I, I'm not fast enough to get up and down over there anymore. I'm not coordinated enough to catch. It's a whole thing, right? <laughs> All right. This should be a real fun class today and easier than you think because the line and wash allows us to do the techniques over the lines. It makes it so that you can focus on the watercolor techniques and not worry so much about the rendering. I totally encourage learning drawing. It's super fun. But it's also okay to use a traceable transfer on pre-sketch or use line and wash as a method. It's just a technique of doing watercolor over fixed lines. Okay, so I'm gonna be working mostly my new Raphael uh, number six round. This is the imitation Kalinske that is absolutely all synthetic, but it behaves like a real Kalinske brush, which I do like a lot. I am gonna begin, I think, on the tail today. Woo, so exciting. So let's begin. I've got Viridian and Olive Green and Magenta on my tail. So I've got the Olive Green, the Viridian, and the Magenta kind of working my tail. And I'm gonna begin with my brush sort of washed out light. I'm gonna get a little paint and bring it over to my palette. See how I'm doing? And washing that out, thinning that out on my palette over here. And when I have a nice thin wash of it, I'm gonna come here and do a very light, very light, light blue on the tail. Isn't that nice? Come down here, mermaid tail. And you can kind of see how the gravity impacts me with my stuff being on this incline. Got little hairs from when I, I had to uh, stretch it. Going to bring this out in little curved strokes. This is the Viridian, which is really kind of a phthalo green. All right. I'm gonna come over here and do the same watercolor, whether you're doing color sheets like this or from tube paint or pan paint, is about controlling the water and the amount of pigment on your brush. And mastering that is like your first fun thing that you get to work on 
as an artist, I think. And come here and add some little blue lines this way. Kind of thinking about those as you do. Now I'm going to come over to the olive green. I'm going to add some of these nice little olive green lines. And you can see they're quite light as well, aren't they? Into the tail. I'm working wet into wet. Oh, that's a pretty thing. I want the olive green. Rinsing out thoroughly, grabbing a little olive green. And I'll go ahead and kind of offload onto that. I might get a stronger bit of color here. And I'll come to the outside of the tail. And I'm going to let this just bloom into. I'm not going to take it all the way to the center. Just going to let that be there like that. Now I'm going to come from the edge of the tail and kind of bring a little water back in. And I might even lift up a little bit of my color. You see here? I lifted back off the paper. This is a 140 pound watercolor paper. Um, that's why uh, we put those in the kits is because it was a really good heavy watercolor paper. Um, I recommend whether you're doing this from our kit or freehanding at home that you use 140 pound watercolor paper. This particular watercolor paper is cold pressed. Let's go to the magenta. This is basically a Quinn magenta. I'm going to come from the tip. And stroke back into the fin. Today has been kind of a crazy day. I've been painting all day. Yeah, it has been a crazy day. All day. I'm working on... Uh, some different programs right now and they have me really super like focused uh, watercolor acrylic all the things acrylic april all the things all right now i'm going to come in and go ahead and brush back on my little fin here pre-wetting it with just clear water i'll go ahead and just edge like this Now I have that in, I'm going to go back to my olive green, my mermaid tail color, and I'm going to add just a little more pigment. I'm loading up my brush kind of heavily to this outer edge right here. And I'm going to tap my brush up and down, kind of creating a little irregular pattern. It's going to feel like a scale a bit. How is everybody doing? Really we good. We are live. If anybody has a question in the live, be sure and put that question all in caps. That's going to either make sure our mods see it or maybe even get it answered live on the show. Because we like to do that here live on the show. And if you haven't, give, your, give us a thumbs up down there below in the comment in that little human buttony section. In the little human section. Pull this around here. What's the human button section where you got to push the button? Do the human things. I don't think they let robots push those buttons. You know, they say that, but I feel like the robot's the only thing that can pass the little, is there a street light in this I just, <laughs> picture? Is there a bicycle? I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's a bicycle. I was like, no. Yeah, but sometimes they give you like a partial bicycle and then you're like, oh, I can't. What? <laughs> little Viridian maybe. Tap that up and down a bit. And see, I'm just doing a stronger pigment now. Is your, little paper, Viridian. is your paper wet on the back also? So I did a wet mount on this and on how to use the Viviva watercolor sheets, we discussed a wet mount. I'm using a plexiglass back to create a smooth surface. The demo did it on my wood, which is no longer smooth enough to do it on. But so that's where I pre-soak the paper and I put it to a surface where it lays flat. 
I kind of burnish it out and then burnishing is like to rub it smooth and then I tape down all the edges so that when I'm painting it, it doesn't warp and wobble on me so much. Kind of like it's in a watercolor block. Okay, but you need some more time on there, John? Yeah, I think it needs another 10 because you put it in before it was preheated. Yeah. So it needs at least another 10. Oh, okay, I just didn't know. That's just going by what Spider said. All right, just loading up some more pigment, all still in the Viridian. Still on step one. We'll be moving on to step soon, two soon, but we just wanted to get step one in. And come here and do some little action lines, curving and flowing with the tail. That's pretty. Curving and then flowing with the tail. And I give John, I think, we're doing good there. Okay, let's call that step one. I'll take any questions if we have them. Uh, <laughs> Crystal Blake, Cinnamon, yes, it looks wet to me. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you guys at the class. Mm. Actually, I know I said that I was good on step one, but I did this green so much darker than that green. I have to go back and balance them. I haven't pushed step two yet. Good. So we're okay. Because I see a moment. I'm going to come back with a little bit of my darker green, and I'm going to just make sure that they're balanced in their uh, value. That's how light or dark something is. I'm going to just brush that in, and I'll add that to the fins. All right, there we go. You just want things to, to be similar. We'll just wash this up, too. Okay, there we go. See, the thing is, now I'm using a damp brush to sort of soften the transition between the dark lines and the tail and see how that sort of smooths out those little lines. That's a, that is absolutely the thing. Okay, now, step and question. Questions and then step. If there's any, you guys might. Totally get yes, I was about to push the, push the mute button for you while you take a little swig. So. As Crystal says, you are so sweet. And she said something earlier like, you want to talk about crazy, live a day in my life. <laughs> I totally can relate to that. Yeah. Let's see here. But uh, now you uh, I don't think we have any questions right now. Right now everyone's saying hello and chatting. And, inside hello, there. everybody. So there's All a right. little bit behind. So what we'll do is I'll gather the questions on between these if two there's steps. The, if there, you don't have to have questions. Well, like if I'm doing a good job, you don't have any. And that's, that's okay. But I oh, my goodness. You know what my question is? No. What happened to that other fin? What did you do? Not paint the other fin. So we still we're still on step one. Mm hmm Okay. Did I mention I painted all day today? <laughs> Very stressful right before the show. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna come here and come under this little fin here and make sure that I get this little fella in. Not funny. You guys will have to excuse me for a second. My littlest is in a bit of an art drama online. It, I think it's got me a little distracted. I'm just kind of working that in. Um, there was a, she's on a video game that allows you to create custom looks for your characters. I guess they're called skins. I'm going to sound super informed here. And um, she had found one that was a creative commons. In other words, anyone could use it as long as they give credit. And she had done a credit, but she had missed a couple of her uh, skin adjustment posts on it where she did the Creative Commons on it. So basically, you take the base model and you change it up. And um, the original artist did contact her and really just went intensely on the conversation for, you know, talking to somebody young. And then Luna had apologized profusely and corrected the Creative Commons, and then they got their community to come and troll her. <laughs> so she took everything down, which I don't think legally she even needed to, because if no, you put something up is... for Creative Commons, that allows everyone to use it as long as you follow the license. And it was just really kind of a thing. So I think that's where my head is sort of at. It was like, oh, somebody somebody trolled my little kid. Now I'm going to go get him. 
Wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah. As I reset myself, since we've got a nice little kind of calm community. Uh, yes. It, thank you, Heather. Thank you so much, Heather. I appreciate it so much. So after the show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the original user agreement and... Um, I'm going to teach my kid how to fight back like an artist. So, so many good questions here that I want to try to <laughs> okay. get. So All right. That's my so kid. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, uh, uh, so, Crystal, if you have any problems posting online, um, doesn't matter where it's at, you can email support at theartsherpa.com and we will help. Yeah. Cindy, I, miss, uh, I missed if this was wet or dry mounted. This is wet mounted. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I soak this paper in my sink? I did. I soaked it in the bathtub right before I came up. Not like for an hour. I just soaked it for like, like a few minutes just, to mount it. Oh, I just... So normally when I'm doing it, I just run it under water. Oh, no. I let it sit in the tub. Oh, let's see. Let's see we do a little different. See, I, I don't think... I think that You don't once, have to. You know, I just did. I think that once it's moist and, and you have a, you have some water to squishy it down with. Okay. Is so anyone... what it is is that the fibers of the paper need to be evenly wet so that as it dries, it dries flat. <laughs> And it's, it's pulls yeah. itself down. So it can be like if you just wet wet, it can actually have dry areas still in it and still warble a bit. Final. And this is a Raphael Good. imitation Kalinsky number six round brush number eight three four four. And I really like it. It is the bomb diggity. Did I tell you it was the bomb diggity? It's the diggity bomb. Okay. So yeah, that's where my my little brain is at. Like you get. All right. Let's go to Cherry Blossom. This is sort of like our opera pink. And I'm going to do an interesting thing. Do you have the step up? Okay. I'm going to get a little Cherry Blossom loaded onto my brush. And I will bring some over here. And you can see it's a little different than my Quinn. Much more different in paper. And I do want a fairly good load on it because I'm going to do a drawdown method. And I'm going to come over here to this far little flower. I'm going to put out a little bead of paint along what is the petal. On the outer edges of the petal. Then I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to get some clear water. You can see it there. And pull down the edges of the paint into the flower. Hmm, there was a little bit of blue paint there. I'm going to come back and pull up some. Right, so I'm coming in wetting and I'm lifting off the paper a little bit before it soaks in totally. And while it's still wet, I'm going to come through and grab some of my happy yellow. I'm going to kind of dust that around. And I'm just going to play back and forth with that, wet into wet, back into my cherry blossom. So I'm going to be working happy yellow and cherry blossom together on these little flowers. Okay, I'm going to do another strong one here. And I want my brush wet enough so that the bead um, holds for a second. See how the bead is kind of wet and heavy? That will let me pull it back later when I need to. Rinsing out. This is sort of like doing a drawdown. It's one of the 32 techniques in the 32 techniques technique video. <laughs> We're drawing down a heavier color into a lighter color. And I'm leaving a little white there. I'm going to come get some happy yellow. Kind of just add some yellow to the center of that flower. Now I'm going to do it much kind of lighter over here. 
And I'm not going to do a drawdown. I'm just going to do a light paint because I just want a light pink. And remember that watercolor has color shift and that color shift is that it dries lighter, not darker. So with acrylic, we're always correcting for it drying darker. In watercolor, we're always correcting for it drying lighter. So we kind of have to visualize the value. That's how light or dark it is for what we are trying to get out of it. Now I'm going to take that yellow while everything is still wet and wiggle the toe of my brush into the center. And you can see what that does is that pulls it out. Because I'm on an incline, I'm gonna pull back that heavy drop because that thing was about to loose and go down my paper, which is I'm kind of okay with, but that's not what we're learning right now. And so that's not what we're doing. <laughs> Again, with the cherry blossom. Now I'm going to do something fun here where I come into the happy yellow. And let those two touch and blend on the paper. Isn't that fun? So I'll let the happy yellow do the drawdown. I'm going to take some happy yellow right here for the moment. I like where that is. Didn't rinse out my brush. Okay, we're going to call that a step. There we have stepped. Now we're going to be alternating between the yellow ochre, burnt umber, and the olive green for a little bit. So I'm going to hold my hand here and kind of be able to flip with my thumb. Yellow ochre is a bit yellow. <laughs> but a little bit yellower in the um, sheets than it is in um, acrylic. I'm going to put little touches of that yellow ochre out so we have that light. I'm going to get into some of my olive green again. And then come down the nice little stems there. Come across here. I'm going to come back into my burnt umber, touch them out here. I can even take my burnt umber over to my olive green and mix those two together. Creating a darker green, isn't that fun? And then kind of go on half of that little I'll tap out some darker color here in the center, just some more pure. Let's put that there and I can come in and maybe go over this with a little bit of Viridian to kind of put that in the shadow. There we go. That is that step. Big it's hugs. a good step. Thank you, Bug, for the thoughts. Thank you, Bug. I appreciate that so much. Uh, big, huge bug hugs for all the neat and special thoughts to our mod and loved the character on Sherpa's shirt. Thank you. Oh, yes. Please send. I, without saying what's going on, I just want you guys to, if you know Mod Cad Red, uh, no, Yellow, Cad Yellow. Yes. Mod Cad Yellow. I forget what color is there. I know who they are as people. I just forget the colors they're going. But Mod Cad Yellow. Um, please send some love and light her way. She could use a little bit right now. All right. Okay, next step here. New step. Shall we? I'm 
let's be tricky and do some skin tone, which we're going to do with our, we have our uh, cherry blossom and we've got our yellow ochre. So I'm going to pull a little cherry blossom over here onto my palette and I'm going to pull a little yellow ochre over here. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to very lightly load up some yellow ochre. And I'm going to paint around the eyes. This is where it became super critical, super critical that I could see. <laughs> Moving fairly quickly because I want to be able to work wet into wet on skin tones. I'm going to again, very light yellow ochre. So light. One of my favorite drawings that I've done. So it's super light. Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and my cherry blossom. Kind of pink up the shoulders here, maybe down at the back a little bit. Kind of around the hairline, right up here, a little pink. So across the nose. And one thing that I will do is if my paper is dried, I'll take a clear, damp brush and blend. See how I'm blending? It will still hold the color where I want it, you know, but then I'll take a damp brush and kind of blend that out. Skin tones and watercolor, so much easier than in acrylic. A little bit of pink. Kind of going at the elbow here. Kind of glazing it over. A little bit of a mix of the ochre and pink underneath the arm. It goes a little bit more brown. You see it creates just some small amount of shade. And I'm going to take my more pink pigment and very softly kind of blush that there. And I definitely want to blush around my hand. Using a little bit more cherry blossom there. All right. So as we're going, you just want to take that until you are super happy. Right, I'm just adding a little pink to the outer edges of the face and then blending with a damp brush. Do you guys love this technique? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. See, now, if you're trying to figure out how to freehand and blend and do all that, you can get lost in the drawing, which is why I like line and wash, uh, especially for beginners, is because then you don't get lost in the drawing. Will eventually we have some freehand watercolor classes? Yes, we will, but we gotta get with the techniques for a minute, right? We gotta get the, the, the group of you through the techniques. And then once you have the techniques down, the other stuff will come, right? Once you're like wet into wet, dry brushing, doing all the different things, you're gonna be just great. But it's okay to do techniques for a little while. So we do a new, a new, new step, there we go. Now, this is dry, so I can come into the center of the cup, and I'm going to change something. I had put a reflection, and I did not like it, and I'm going to improve it. I used a uh, slate gray to create, create kind of a gray reflection, and I didn't love it. Just didn't work how I wanted it to. So I'm going to do my teacup the way I did the original one, because I loved that. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some burnt umber. And 
and on this far edge I'm going to let that bloom down and again remember I'm on a slant this watercolor is on a slant so not only is the capillary effect of the water allowing everything to bloom but so is gravity I'm on a tilted surface and I'm wet mounted onto a board dang that's a mess up what John's doing <laughs> as I pull it around now I'm going to come into my yellow ochre, get a slightly heavier load, and I'm going to blend in a little of my yellow ochre. I'm going to come under the tail with a little burnt umber. Kind of heavily loaded onto the tip. And another like heavier little line of it here on the far edge of the teacup. Do a little kind of counterbalance there, going in like there's a little, there's something under the water there. Under the tea. Under the tea. She's not spilling any tea on this. Okay, let's throw up another step. I am going to come to my very favorite blue, which is my peacock blue. I'm going to get it on the tippy 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 toe of my brush. And with a uh, wing and a prayer, I'm going to get it in my eye. <laughs> it's always such a relief when it goes in. I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to mix a little of my peacock blue into my cherry blossom. And get kind of like a burgundy little lip going here. I'm going to come above the little lip again as gently as I can. And then I'm rinse out and just allow draw down to pull to the bottom lip. That one's harder than you think. Grab a little bit of this here. A little purple on the inner eye. I know. Super detailed. I know guys, I'm sorry. I thought of it after I designed it. I was like, this is a lot going on. Let's put a little shadow under the nose. But you know what you're learning? Detail. Detail. I'm gonna grab a little of my ochre and I'm gonna come above the eye. Pull a little bit down there. It's kind of lovely. Go ahead and soften that. Slight shadow on that side of the nose a bit. And a little bit there. It's a journey. Grab a little by. Now we're creating just a minor shadow. So the face has got more going on than you might initially think. It's a little more than you might think. And tap out a little eyebrow. Yeah, I got fussy with it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but it's what we did, so it's what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my Quinn Magenta. And we'll do another step. Put some out on my palette. A little Quinn Magenta on my palette. I'm going to come here and start making some little C curves. Inside the little rows here that we have drawn out.
marker at the center. Gets lighter as we come out. So it should be pinkest in that center of the rows and then getting lighter as we go out. Might go ahead and take some of that little purple and sort of maybe add that, that purple. Add a little bit under there because I feel like could be in shadow a little more than it is. Pretty happy campy. Yeah. All right. Now the face is dry. So I am going to go to my yellow ochre, I think, and maybe some burnt umber. Hmm. I don't know. So originally the hair I did in yellow ochre and burnt umber, but I'm kind of like, I'm wondering like if it'd be fun to make her a redhead. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm coming in with my dusk orange. Can always pull it over here if I need to. Starting with a little dusk orange. A bit of hair comes up here. Just a little bit of hair coming down here. Fun stuff. This one is a bit fussier. But these are good skills to work on. Pulling a little more color through some places. You can see that's just kind of picking it up. Let's let that have maybe, I'm going to grab a little bit here and kind of come back to the eyebrow and just very carefully maybe tap some orange in. Oh my gosh, it's such a hair. I'm just on the toe of my brush. This is one of those ones where the brush will matter. Right, because it gives you the ability to hit a hair fine detail and the brush is going to matter on that. All right, let's call that a step. And we'll go back and add a little detail to our tail while we're letting the hair set. And I'm still gonna be into my Viridian. I'm gonna load up a dark amount of the Viridian on my the toe of my brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, just take a second and add some little little C curves that are like little scales. We're just, we're not painting one into wet. We're going over dry paint. You okay, babe? Oh, sure, sure, sorry. Uh -huh. Not meaning to. I think it was just, I, I was positioned uncomfortably, so you know. Yeah, I do. Sometimes you just take a deep breath and not even realizing it. Dude, I take a deep breath because I'm out of breath. <laughs> It'll happen. You're just adding a little bit of detail. Just a little, little texture, a little thought to the tail. So I'm just loading some up.
I'm going to come back and get into my magenta a little bit. Put a little heavier load of magenta on there, kind of brushing that back in. I like that, just pulling that back up that side of the fin. A lot of times if you go over uh, thalo green with a magenta, you get a really great purple. So I can play with that here. Just kind of deepening the color. Almost a dry brush. Kind of dry brushing that a little bit. Now at this point the hair should be dry so we can call it a new step. And I think I'm going to take my orange and my red to push the red of the orange. So I'm going to take the dusk orange right here and I'm going to mix in some vivid red and I'm going to mix those together. And I'm going to come right here and following the hair just on the toe of my brush some deep shadows where the hair is maybe, you know, like right here at the base thicker. Just coming along the toe. All right, look at that. She's just coming together, isn't she? Yeah, she really is. I'm loving her today. I'm going to the next step. More steps, so many steps. Okay, so one of the steps that I want to do is I want to come in and maybe do some foliage green. That's the foliage green above the peacock blue. Make sure I got enough water on my brush. Do some nice kind of bright green leaves coming out. One of the nice things about having a lot of different green on a palette is that it lets you really play with everything. I'm going to come into my magenta a little bit. And add some shadows a few places in little kind of curves to the rows. Just to make it look a little more dimensional. I'm going to rinse out. And... Let's get into our slate gray. Ink blue. Actually, I think we're going to do ink blue. We'll pull some on the palette here. All right, let's call it another step. I have some ink blue here. I'm going to come along the back of the cup. I'm going to pull a light wash of ink blue down, so it's just a little bit of pigment into a fairly wet brush. And pull that forward, and then I'm going to get a heavier load of pigment. A little bit along the tail, but definitely along the back. Of the teacup. And 
And then I'm gonna get a lot. Kind of let that sort of blend down and bloom down. I'm going to do the next part in kind of a wash. I'm going to come through here in a very light gray wash. Very light gray. First doing this light gray and then maybe I'll come back and get just a little couple darker colors where like maybe there's more of a shadow that's under here. And then I'll come back and soften it like we did earlier. With a damp brush. A little shadow. Through that flower, little shadow, lighter here, All right? I'm going to come here and I'm going to go ahead and wet out this way towards the right with cleaner water. Come back into the little bit of pigment that I put to the side so it's not as heavy as what's on my ink blue swatch. By the way, I've been loving seeing your guys' version. Is my paper still wet? It isn't even cool. So it has dried out now. My paper has dried out now. So, and the wetness of your paper will hold depending on the make of the paper. Is it 100% cotton? 100% cotton will hold, hold wetness longer and you want that. Um, sizing, quality, thickness, weight, ambient humidity, all those things can make your paper be wet a slightly different time than mine. So some of it is seeing how it's behaving on mine, but some of what you guys need to do is also learn, oh, in my humidity or my area, um, the paper does this. I do recommend um, Fabriano paper. Uh, very much. It is a 800 year old company. Fabriano a, a few years back had um, some stuff go wrong with the sizing and they uh, caught it and recalled it but it got them, I'm putting a little shadow here, some bad reviews, some bad press which still comes up now and again, right? Um, but the truth is is that all paper companies have, because oftentimes these are handmade products or they're sourced uh, from different places. Uh, Fabriano makes all their paper have done so for 800 years. But, um, you know, some places are like purchasing on an open market and stuff. So sometimes the quality on paper can vary. So even when you become really familiar with the paper, you can find yourself uh, feeling like, oh, this is unexpected. I haven't ever had this experience with this paper before. So that's not unusual. And so that's why I recommend Fabriano and maybe not all the uh, artists out there do. I think more and more are coming forward and being like, no, this is like the company. Um, but that's why if ever you hear an artist be like, oh, I don't like the paper, it's probably that they ran into that weird batch. And also keep in mind, Fabriano makes professional paper and a student paper. And the student paper is not 100% cotton. So it performs a little differently right. in the way that it takes and releases paint. So all those things are a factor. I added a shadow through here and on the outside edge here, leaving a highlight right there, giving it that sort of uh, value and shape that you might have. I'm going to bring a little bit around, but it's very light if you'll notice. And do a little bit around, very light, and then maybe a little bit under here. We'll pull a little shadow, I think, underneath that T handle. That could be kind of nice. And then I'm going to grab my pink and a little bit of my foliage green and sort of tap it wet into wet through here. And that's because in the original China pattern, there was like a little bit of a flower pattern, but I thought it'd be fun to do it in a loose way. 
which means I kind of imply that those things are here, but I don't specifically necessarily try to paint their individualness out. Back to the magenta, I want a little more pigment than I grabbed. Thank you guys for being in here. I've noticed that the kits have been doing really well and you guys have got them. And I want you to know that I have a ton of projects for you based on the kids. So you've got, you've got some value out of it. I want to make sure that you are hooked up with some stuff as we go. Okay, so let's call this a step. And we're going to do our little gold line and then we'll do our drippy drips and then we'll do our white lining and we'll be done. So fast. So fast. All right, I'm going to rinse, 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 rinse my brush. Boy, I haven't changed it, have I? I've just lived in this number six today. Some days you live in a number six. I'm just going to take a little of my happy yellow. I'm going to kind of loosely come around the edge. I'm very loose and irregular with that stroke. No, I want it to just be playful. Go ahead and maybe get a little of this gray paint here too. I think looking at that, I might want to add a little shadow over here on the right hand side a bit. See how we did? It's just a, it's just something going on because you know, she's there. So she would cast a bit of a shadow, wouldn't she? Yeah. I don't want to forget her for that. Okay, so when we come back, let's do some drips. And we're going to remember that I'm on an angle. This is tipped up, tipped up. You're going to have to tip up possibly to get your drip to work. Another yep, another step. I'm going to come under with a lot of water. Actually, I may even get fresh water because I think this water is slightly pigmented. It won't impact it because I'm doing different dark colors, but... And I'm, you know, adding a lot of water. And what will happen is at some point when water is tipped, it will want to drip. Like if I tipped it even more, added more gravity to the circumstance, that would start to pull these little drops down, wouldn't it? But I also like to um, just uh, kind of paint my drips. <laughs> Because gravity, uh, even though Malcolm is right, you know, about chaos theory and all those things, <laughs> sometimes I want to art out my stuff. So I'm going to come to my violet now. I love the violet because it looks gold and then you paint it and it's super violet. And I will go ahead and kind of, like you do. Oh, I didn't mean to grab magenta. Back into the violet. That happens sometimes. Sometimes I'll even break up my drops because I know I'm also going to splatter. So even drops are designed. Things that often look maybe accidental, you still want to be thoughtful about. And how they balance and how they design. Now I'm going to come into my... Viridian. And I'm going to tap my brush up and down with my Viridian.
All right, and so I'm allowing it to bloom and wet into wet into the paper, aren't I? And it's sort of an enjoyable little artful yeah. bit of nonsense, I feel. Maybe come fussily around the flower. Not really done though, right? Because I do want to splatter. So now I'm going to take a little bit of my Viridian and I'm going to splash out. I take my brush and it's loaded with a little bit of water and paint and I tap down and it kind of sends some drops going downwards. They may go some other places. And that's something if you're really concerned, you may need to put a mask or a paper towel over your art. I kind of want it to go some places, so I'm not going to try to prevent that. But if you're like, yeah, I can't have drops where I don't want drops to be, definitely mask the upper area. But I want it to be a little bit artful in that way. I also now have watercolor freckles. So, you know, that's how we do. Those I are always can fun. use a Posca pen. See if there's any. Yeah, there's some paint left in that. Or I can use white acrylic fluid paint. Or I can use gouache. Or I can use a jelly pen. I'm going to come along the little tail and I'm going to add a little ripple. right there along that little tail. I'm going to come along her little back. Now I'm going to avoid my drops. Let's see how I kind of went around that drop because I know that drop's going to mess up my pen. Yep. Sometimes the jelly is better. Sometimes the Posca is better. Sometimes I'm going to come up and do da dabs up there. I don't want to drag through my drips either. They're a little bit narrower here. This is sort of like little reflecty scales. Little reflection scales. I also avoid drops. So see how we can add those little ripples? And that's a nice touch in the teacup, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I like that very, very much. I'm going to add a little bit of the white at the tip of her nose. Sort of tap that down just for a little reflection. That's me. I don't try to put one in the eye. I don't see that well. That's my cup of C. You're need I to can't sign wait it, to though. see yours. <laughs> it's really just a lot of fun. Line and wash is just a lot of fun. Now, are we going to do freehand watercolors where we do that for practice where we're like, let's paint a strawberry with no pencil lines and just paint and see how that works out? Yes, we are, because that's very good practice for us. And doing botanical studies and all those things are good practice. But I'm going to make sure that if you are getting these and you have the London wash kits, that you have projects to come. Now, remember, when we release kit two, if you've still got paint, which you should still have paint in your main set, you don't have to buy this set again. You can buy just the paper. Hmm. So there might be a little delay in our release for some different things that are going on, um, but it, it should, shouldn't be too far off. And um, I just want you to know you don't have to buy the, the sheets every, every, every single time, though they are really going quickly. And I know everyone's loving them. And I know I want to shout out to Elena, baby Elena, who I guess is not totally a baby anymore. This is one of the early serpent baby princesses little brushes um, for doing a line and wash in the watercolor. It was super good. And I saw it and I thought it was just amazing and really good art. Um, I cannot wait to see yours. And I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this and that you change up your mermaid or maybe it look like someone you know or... 
you know, I actually, after I did this, I thought it'd be really fun to do like a koi pattern on the fish, the tail, like make her a koi mermaid. I've done koi mermaids before. Like change, change the coloring on the tail could be fun or the hair or even, you know, maybe this is pea flower tea. It's yeah. just really fun. You just never know. So you can play with this, play with this, play with this. Um, signing is a little challenging. I will try to sign where there isn't a drop. <laughs> There is a giveaway coming up. I'm going to be giving away three complete kits. That's the four of the um, watercolor sheets to do the line and wash with. Um, it's one of these, the uh, tester set, and the cards, and a mystery brush, mystery travel brush. I'm going to be giving away three, and that is um, everywhere that sweepstakes are legally allowed around the world. That you're allowed to That's have That's a one. good place to do it. Yeah. Everywhere we're legally allowed. If your place allowed. doesn't allow it, I can't help that. But it, it is not associated with YouTube or Facebook or la, la, la. I'm just me doing it. And if you want to ask us about questions, rate us at supportoftheartstripper.com. There's not going to be any cost for entry. Um, it's going to be a condo comment picked by a random comment picker. And you have to be old enough to win a contest like 18 or over. The rules are in that video's um, description. It should automatically pop up. It's in the upcoming live. It's the next one in the upcoming live. Come to that. Um, definitely come and enter because I think that's going to be a really good giveaway. Tell your friends. Oh, yeah. If you're wanting a friend to get into this with you, this is the thing. Like, I'm in because, like, it's a free. And if you've been watching this, but right now the budget is, and I always do the giveaways because sometimes the budget doesn't make it possible. So I always like to make sure I give a couple away. So you guys know that I get that and I understand and I care. Yeah. I wish I could do it on the level that Mr. Beast does. <laughs> like a thousand. <laughs> that would be really fun. Maybe someday. <laughs> but for right now, I just want to make sure we had something. And we'll be finishing the last setup. If you guys want to see what we've got coming up. We've done the turtle. We've done the boat. Boat, boat. I got to find the dad. The swim dad. Where's Swim Dad? There he is, Swim Dad! So many of these. This is the next one when they were gonna be doing together. And there's gonna be so many ways to do this. The splatters behind there is, I think, the rainbow turtle. Nope, that's the cloud. We will be doing the happy cloud. Does that seem like a fun one? Yeah, it does. Happy clouds coming up. There's gonna be lots and lots of fun ones. Nice serious landscape. The dad and the kid. The ostrich. Oh, he's a life book, but <laughs> bird, flowers, and this is what you'll be getting in the mail. little line and wash stuff, peaks. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. John, questions? Ask me all the questions before we go. Uh, any move date? Do we have, we're, we have to wait. So what it is, because we're YouTubers, we hit, originally the thought was because we work online and and we do it on YouTube that we could be there and just do our YouTubery. But since we make our living at it, that changed the type of visa that we have to have. And we're just waiting for that to get approved. But the company is officially over there now. <laughs> we have an employee. <laughs> we don't yet officially, yep. they haven't given us back. That could be just any day. Now, Any day. But I think it's going to have to be after NAMTA at this point, mm -hmm. which puts it in the beginning of April, which does not thrill me. I don't know. We might get over earlier, but I, I'm not quite sure how, because I think I, ha I, I, think I am going to NAMTA um, yeah. to do demos and stuff, which is the yep. North American Trade Show Association. And, uh, and now it's with um, Creative Nation. Um, so they pack that up, but I don't know if I'm going to be there in the open student days. I think I'm just going to be there for the trade show days. Right. Now, That's some industry talk some, right some there. Questions Basically, about I got to go talk to these guys and get some more sheets <laughs> and, uh, see if Faber and Costello will let us have, um, their stuff in the store. Cause I want their stuff in the store. So I got to go be like, Faber, Castell, please, we're <laughs> real. We won't cause you trouble. We're not going to be a problem and you're going to love our community. They're the best. Now, okay. what's the difference between linen and cotton, and which is better? Well, it is actually, you know what? I don't have that off the top of my head. In canvas, I do. That's okay. I assume it's the same. Linen is a finer fabric, and generally the weaves and thread counts are higher, and it's smoother. 
Um, and cotton, believe it or not, is uh, used to be like kind of a bigger deal to run into. Uh, now it's everywhere. It's like ubiquitous. But there was a time when it was probably easier to run into linen. Okay, so can you... But on paper, I haven't run into linen paper, but I'm sure it exists. Uh, okay, I'm not exactly sure I understand. But I don't know in paper. I will look that up and see if there is something. Have you ever heard of the plastic paper? Mm-hmm. There's some stuff on that about it. Now, yeah. there's some no, other plastic, stuff. So plastic paper would be different. RC papers, I used it in photography, and you'll sometimes use it in alcohol inks. Like, you definitely want to use that with alcohol inks because you don't want the paper to pull the pigment in those and or uh, sometimes in photography you use a plastic paper and what that basically is is that's a paper that has a um, sizing on the surface that will take the paint but none of it absorbs and you can do some cool alcohol layering and some fun watery washout techniques with it it's very cool i'm not against it it's very cool now, the stuff that you have hanging down there on the bottom what is the, the uh, underneath the, the teacup? Is that supposed to be plant life? Is that just some That's just drips. drips? Just some, some just pretty, drips. Art, just pretty drips. Okay. You know how, if, 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 if drippy wasn't art's sure. not your thing, then don't do drippy art. Drippy art wasn't, is my just thing. Just wasn't sure there. No. Okay. I think right. that was it. Was that all the questions? I think that covers them. Crystal Blake, so not for watercolors. No, you can actually use RC papers with watercolors, but the watercolors will be a little different with it. And you can paint on canvases. They have aqua canvases and aqua boards for canvas that you can paint on. I've even got a ground that will turn rocks into watercolor paintable things. You can paint if you want to. You can paint if you want to. There's always a way. There's a, First of all, if Golden hasn't made a medium for it, I'm stumped. It's the safety paint. Yeah, that's why we're definitely carrying Golden in the store and all the mediums because they have a medium for everything. I mean, stuff I haven't even shown you guys. They have a medium that they only want professional artists to buy because it's so, like, you got to be so careful with the safety sheet. I mean, so if it's, if you had an idea, there's a medium for it to make it work. Glass painting, all of it. Drips are gorgeous, says Amy. And I don't know, there's some, uh, oh, stone paper. Yeah, stone uh, paper I have seen. It's yeah, a that's actually really cool. Yeah, you know, we've we've played with that some of that stuff before. We may play with it again in the future. It requires sometimes I don't get into processing. those papers. Sometimes I don't do that stuff. Um, if I'm trying to make sure that the that the the minimum uh, tutorial kind of you guys' needs for tutorials are met, I'm going to try to use like stuff you can easily find. Like you'll yeah. run into the watercolor ground because it's now available at Michaels and different stores, so it's easier to find. Oh, Tony Stack says, friendly. thank you, Mods. Thank you, Sherpa and John. I love this community and so appreciate the kindness. Speaking of, if you want a place to share your art where people are going to be nice, come by the Art Sherpa Group Official on Facebook. We curate that. I know sometimes moderation is not a popular topic on Facebook, and I'm not saying that free speech isn't important, but sometimes when we're new artists, we don't need to know what everybody thinks. Yep. <laughs> and so that group has very specific moderation rules, and no one's ever allowed to be me, ever, ever, ever. Um, uh, Goldie Ford says, I absolutely love this one. Thank you for your teaching. Goldie Ford, thank you for your time. Yeah. I really appreciate more fun stuff is coming. I still have, look, all these little plops are regular pigmented paints. So we still have that stuff going on and I will be making some lessons. I've got a grip too much black paper. I'm gonna have to do a black paper giveaway. I have a bunch of black paper. And I have uh, metallic watercolors from Senelier that I get to test. So we may do something with that. So there's fun stuff coming. I have no aqua board, so you're lucky there. <laughs> All right. I'll see you at the giveaway. I want to wish everybody good luck. You know, be sure you come by and enter for your chance to win one of three uh, giveaway prizes that we have going on. Um, I can't wait to see who wins them. I can't wait to see what we do next. We got the deck going up. I'll get that on the schedule. And guys... Here's the most important thing. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.